Hello, everybody. I don't know if this sounds okay. I'm recording through my broken headset. <laughs> so my normal microphone is packed in a box because I'm moving a bunch of stuff and my headset just broke. So I hope this sounds okay. I only have one, one ear working. I don't feel it's a, it's full moon in Scorpio tonight. So I really don't feel like running to Walmart and dealing with, uh, you know, Walmart's crazy anyway, but full moon and Scorpio crazy. I don't know if I can deal with, but did we see the nails? We're doing manifesting today. Just so you know, it's a manifesting Monday. Do we see, do we, I, I don't know if this is catching on the monitor or on the thing. Ooh, I can't, I can't see. I can't, it's, I have the phone flat. So that's why I can't really see it. Oh my God. I love this so much. You know, I wasn't going to do, I have a very big event on Saturday I have to go to, and I was going to do these nails closer to Saturday because I don't want any of the little gems to fall off. But you know, I'm kind of, you know, it's not that I'm sad. I'm not sad, but it, it is full moon in Scorpio. So, you know, it's affecting all of us emotionally. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do the nails and make myself happy. That's literally, I was just sitting here and I was like, I'm just going to make myself happy. So today, if you're having an emotional time, I've talked to a couple people today that were um, nearly in tears uh, or were actually in tears. Um, and it really, this full moon in Scorpio, it's the first super moon of um, 2021. It's the pink moon. And the fact that it's in Scorpio, Scorpio is one of the most, if not the most, emotional signs of the zodiac. And then there's also some other stuff going on. Uh, Pluto's coming in. So Pluto brings up old issues and brings stuff that was not good to light. Um, so there's a lot astrologically going on. And just so you know, uh, the moon's, I think it's going full. I think it's tech, uh, uh, depending on who I hear it from, it's either, it's going full sometime overnight tonight. So it's actually late, late Monday into Tuesday morning, depending what time zone you're in and all that good stuff. But, um, the, moon is going to stay in Scorpio for another two days. So buckle up because you're going to have three days of emotionality. So if you're feeling not good enough or you're feeling unloved or you're feeling all sorts of stuff, just, just understand it's probably moon in Scorpio. That's all I got to say. Um, like I was having a day today where every, I had a, a few doctor's appointments today and it was like almost everybody I spoke to was you know, I'm down here in the South and, and typically people are extra nice and like extra slow and extra, like really want to understand. And like, I thought I was back on the East coast for a minute. Like they were snippy little, you know what? And I was just like, what? So, um, you know, like just everybody's on edge right now. So just, just know it's, and, and I even sat there, I had two different doctor's appointments today and I was just like, okay, all right moon and Scorpio. That's all I can think in my head. So, but anyway, we're going to get to manifesting. Hi, if you're new here, hi, we do magic manifesting and makeup. Um, oh, I have some, I didn't bring it down with me. I got some new Dr. Bronner soap today. I was at this wonderful store and they had Dr. Bronner soap and I washed everything down with it. And it's Dr. Bronner's tea tree and eucalyptus. Oh my God. The floors smell so good. So I've I will review that. I'll bring that on camera next time. Probably, I don't know, Wednesday. We still got to do the outside video. I might, I might do a little tiny, tiny snippet of an outside video because I am about to take the dogs for a walk to go look at the crazy moon in Scorpio. Um, but first, we're going to read our book. So it's Manifesting Monday. Um, I talked to one of our master manifestors. I don't know if she wants me to say her name, but you know who you are. I talked to you until the wee morning hours the other night. You know who you are. You can leave a little... You can leave a little like, little little thumbprint down below if you want. Um, so hopefully this is really helping you. And then we're going to get more into reality transurfing. Um, but we're on chapter 10 of this book. Are we chapter 9 or chapter 10? I forget. Uh, I, it showed me. Yes, we're on chapter 10 because I had my bookmark here, but I just want to make sure. I don't know why I was thinking like, maybe we're not. How much do we have left? We have chapter 11. We have chapter, there's small chapters though. 12, I think there's 15 in the book. Let's see. Oh no, there's more. Okay. 16. 16. There's 16 in the book. Little tiny 17. Summary. So yeah. So, okay. 
So we're two thirds of the way in. You guys, let's see if we can bang this out. Maybe I'll do um, a chapter a day and just get it done with and we'll head into reality transurfing. Oh, do you know what I did? Oh my God, I'm probably gonna be like, eh, in the, in the, in the, the microphone. Mama D's so old. Can you guys give me, can you pray for me? Can you give me a little prayer? I was fixing something outside. It's been three days now. I'm getting a little concerned. I might have to get another, yet another doctor's appointment. I'm scared I tore something in my knee. <laughs> like it's, I'm one of those people that like nothing ever happens to, but uh, it's been three days now and I have to walk up the steps. Like I have a pull up my butt, you know, cause I can't bend my knee. I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little concerned. So give a little prayer. So right when I was uh, getting ready to lean over and read, I had, I moved my knee and I was just like, ah, this hurts so bad. So yeah, straightening it and bending it hurts really bad. That's way in. If you're a nurse, let way in down below and tell me what I, what, what thing I ripped out of my knee. I should go to the doctor. Shouldn't I? I should. I probably should. Oh, well, whatever. We'll figure it out. So chapter 10. We're six minutes into the video and haven't even done anything yet. Oh, hey, you, those of you that have left reviews, thank you so much. Um, real quick, we're going to have new products this week, new books, all that good stuff. But I have finally figured out the algorithm. I've been studying and studying and studying. I've read every book. I've spent about $100 on Amazon just getting books on how to figure out the algorithm. Yeah, which is really dumb because I figure out algorithms for my finance company. I don't know why I'm trying to have other people tell me uh the algorithm for uh etsy and all that stuff is re is reviews so the more reviews you can leave um obviously good ones <laughs> you know like to, you i mean if you're not happy with something come to me personally and i will fix it for you but if you can leave reviews and actually write something like don't just put like five stars put like five stars and be like i liked it or you know whatever uh the more of those you can leave the that actually ups my algorithm. So after paying Etsy untold amounts of money for advertising and all sorts of stuff, yeah, it's the reviews. So let me let that little trade secret out there. So if you can review stuff, that would help me so much so I can put this beautiful content out here for you. Chapter 10, we finally get to it after seven minutes and 39 seconds. Okay. You cannot retain a true and clear vision of wealth if you are constantly turning your attention to opposing pictures whether they be external or imaginary. Okay. I'm going to try not to stop a lot. It's only like three pages, four pages, five pages. Um, but opposing pictures. So when we get to reality transurfing, remember opposing forces because they talk about that a lot, which is the same thing, which is when you guys are manifesting, sometimes you call me and you're like, it's not happening. It's not happening. It's not happening. If you're holding two beliefs at the same time, like he's going to call me, he's not going to call me. If you hold those two beliefs at the same time, it's basically like sitting in your car with your foot on the gas and the brake at the same time. You're just going to burn your tires up. That's, that's all that's going to happen. You're not going to go anywhere. Okay. So opposing forces is a big issue. Okay. So, um, do not tell of your past troubles of a financial nature. If you have had them, do not think of them at all. Do not do do no tell of the poverty of your parents or the hardships of your early early life. To do any of these things is to mentally class yourself with the poor for the time being, and it will certainly check the movement of things in your direction. Let the dead bury their dead, as Jesus said. Put poverty and all things that pertain to poverty completely behind you. You have accepted a certain theory of the universe as being correct and are resting all your hopes of happiness on its being correct. And what can you gain by giving heed to conflicting theories? See, this is that opposing forces thing. Do not read religious books which tell you that the world will soon be coming to an end. Oh, we all know it's coming to an end. <laughs> and this was written in 1910, so it hasn't ended yet. And do not read the writing of muckrakers and pessimistic philosophers who tell you that all is going to the devil. The world is not going to the devil. It is going to God. It is wonderful becoming it, it. Yeah, it is wonderful becoming true. There may be a good many things in existing conditions which are disagreeable, but what is the use of studying them when they are certainly passing away? And when the study of them only tends to check their passage and keep them with us, why give time and attention to things that are being removed by evolutionary growth when you can hasten, hasten their removal 
only by promoting the evolutionary growth as far as your part of it goes. Well, that was wordy for saying um, what we give attention to grows and what we take our attention away from disappears, which is basic manifesting, right? No matter how horrible and in seeming may be the conditions in certain countries, sections, or places, you waste your time and destroy your own chances by considering them. You should interest yourself in the world's becoming rich. So not just you, but everybody in the world. Think of the riches the world is coming into instead of the poverty it is growing out of. And bear in mind that the only way in which you can assist the world in growing rich is by growing rich yourself through the creative method, not the competitive one. I agree. Compet don't compete with other people. Always compete with yourself. Okay. Always try to be better than you were yesterday. Give your attention wholly to which riches, not witches. Ah, give your attention wholly to M Mama D. Okay. Give your attention wholly to riches. Ignore poverty. Whenever you think or speak of those who are poor, think and speak of them as those who are becoming rich. Those who are to be congratulated rather than pitied. Then they and others will catch the inspiration and begin to search for their way out. Um, Neville Goddard talks about in one of his lectures, he, some guy owed him money and his wife was like kind of pissed off and she was like, he owes you money, he owes you money. And so Neville Goddard was like, chill, it's done. Like he thought about it and what he did. So, so uh, I won't tell you what he did, but um, so three days later, this guy comes over to the house and he's got this brand new, like really expensive car. Now this is back in like the twenties and thirties when like just to have a car was a big deal. Um, so we have this really expensive car and he like rolls up and he owed, I think he owed Neville Goddard like $5,000 in the twenties and the thirties, which was like a hundred thousand dollars. It was a ton of money. And, um, and Neville Goddard's wife was like, what the hell? You know, she was like, really? And so they all go out to lunch, lunch or dinner, they go out and the two wives come home separate and the two men drive home and they talk business. And basically the guy paid Neville Goddard back. Right. And so his wife was like, Oh, did you imagine him paying you back? And Neville Goddard was like, no, I imagined him getting a really good job. Isn't that great? So it's like, yeah. So imagine other people rich. Um, because I say you are to give your whole time and mind thought to riches it does not follow that you are to be sordid or mean. Oh, well, then I'm out. Okay. To become really rich is the noblest aim you can have in life, for it includes everything else. On the competitive plane, the struggle to get rich is a godless scramble for power over other men. But when we come into the creative mind, all is changed. All that is possible in the way of greatness and soul unfoldment of service and lofty endeavor comes by the way of getting rich. All, the, all is made possible by the use of things. If you lack for physical health, you will find the attainment of its conditional. Oh, you will find the attainment of it is conditional on your getting rich. Only those who are emancipated from financial worry and who have the means to live a carefree existence to follow hygienic practices can have and retain health. So, you know, don't forget, this is back in like the 1910s that this was written. So, you know, if you were poor, you lived in literal ghettos, like literally, uh, that's where the term came from. It's not like a, a modern thing, but, um, and it was dirty. You were in cramped, unhygienic conditions. So I, I, and I think we can put this to, um, I remember studying in social economics in school back a million years ago when I was in college they found that it wasn't that rich people lived law or people higher socioeconomic what is what you know we would call it so it wasn't that lower socioeconomic people um had a lower life span you know lived shorter and higher socioeconomic people lived longer not because they got better quality care but because they advocated for their health so it was like if somebody of lower socioeconomic went to the hospital and the doctor said something, they would just accept it and go along with it. And uh, another person, let's say somebody who um, had a, a different lifestyle, had more education, things like that, if a doctor said something and that person didn't like it, they would say, oh, screw you, and they go to another doctor. Or they would say, no, I'm not gonna do that, that's stupid. Um, they could actually advocate for their own health care. 
And, and that, this paragraph kind of reminds me of that actually is like, once you get to a certain point where you're not concerned, you're not, you're not shackled by how much is this going to cost me? You can, you can pipe up and say, no, you're going to treat me better. You know? So that's, I think that that's, that would apply more to now modern day healthcare or how money can help you with your health and also buying better food and, and all that stuff, you know? So, um, so moral and spiritual greatness is possible only to those who are above the competitive battle for existence, which is what we just talked about. And only those who are becoming rich on the plane of creative thought are free from degrading influences of competition. If your heart is set on domestic happiness, remember that love flourishes best where there is refinement, a high level of thought, and freedom from corrupting influences. And these are to be found only where riches are attained by the exercise of creative creative thought without strife or rivalry. You can aim at nothing so great or noble. I repeat, as to become rich, you must fix your attention upon the mental picture of riches to the exclusion of all that may tend to dim or obscure the vision. You must learn to see underlying truth in all things. You must see beneath all seemingly wrong conditions, the great one life ever moving forward toward fuller expression and more complete happiness. It is the truth that there is no such thing as poverty. It is there that there is only wealth. Some people remain in poverty because they are ignorant of the fact that there is wealth for them and that it, and these can best be taught by showing them the way to affluence in your own person and practice. Others are poor because they feel there is a way I'm sorry, all others are poor, comma, <laughs> because while they feel there is a way out, they are too intellectually indolent to put forth the mental effort necessary to find the way and by travel it. For And for these, the very best thing you can do is to arouse their desire by showing them the happiness that comes from being rightly rich. Others are still poor because while they have some notion of science... They have become so swamped and lost in the maze of metaphysical and occult theories, they do not know which road to take. They try to maneuver, I'm sorry, they try to mixture of many systems and fail in all. For these, again, the very best thing is to show them the right way in your own person and practice. An ounce of doing things is worth a pound of theorizing. A man, sister, honey, child. This is why I love Reverend Ike, because Reverend Ike, could, you know, metaphysical and occult knowledges. Yes. <sighs> I have people come to me all the time and they're like, I need this. I need this. I need, I, I need to pay for um, kid stuff. I need to pay doctor bills. I need my boss to give me a raise. I need to buy new clothes. I need to get this surgery. I need to, da, 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 da. and they want like a spell for each individual thing. And I'm like, whoa, 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 back up, back up. And, and, and of course they want all these things. And then they'd be like, I only have $30. And I'm like, well. What you invest is what you're going to get out of it, like anything in life. But also, um, they, they're they focusing so much on every little tiny thing that they need to pay for instead of, and I'll say to them, I can do a spell where you know, money, or I can put a spell kit together for you, whatever you want, where money can come in from all different avenues. And they go, no, I don't want that. I want my boss to give me, you know an extra 10 hours a week. And I'm like, wait, but what, <laughs> but I'm giving you this better thing. I'm giving you this better option. So, so yeah, a lot of times when we get into the metaphysical, everybody has something that works for them. Okay. Some people it's scripting, some people it's visualizing, some people it's yoga, some people it's spells, some people it's, you know, I Ching, you know, some people it's tarot cards, whatever it is. No, no one is better than any other. Just know that like whatever works for you, work it and don't try to make the um, vegetable stew of every single, pra if I do all the practices, then it's better because I see this a lot where people get lost, you know? Um, so honestly, tarot cards, candles, and Neville Goddard. Th that's my slow jam. Those three things, I'm good. Can I add 50 other things in? Yeah. Do I know it all forward and backward? Absolutely. But like he said, it gets too mishmash. So, so think about that in your own manifesting. Are you trying to do too much? Because I really like that, that uh, an ounce of practice is worth a pound of theory. It's true. 
the very best thing you can do for the whole world is to make the most of yourself. And, you know, this isn't even the money part. Honestly, just try to be better than you were the day before. You can serve God and man in no more effective way than by getting rich. That is, if you get rich by the creative method and not by the competitive one. Another thing, we assert that this book gives in detail the principles of the science of getting rich. And if that is true, you do not need to read any other book upon the subject. This may sound narrow or egotistical, but consider there is no more scientific method of computation in mathematics than by addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. No other method is possible. There can be but one shortest distance between two points. There is only one way to think scientifically, and that is to think the way that leads the most direct and simple route to the goal. No man has yet formulated a briefer or less complex system than the one set forth herein. It has been stripped of all non-essentials. When you commerce on this, I'm sorry, when you commence, I'm thinking about money. When you commerce, when you commence on this, lay all people aside and put them out of your mind altogether. Read this book every day. Keep it with you. Commit it to memory. And do not think about other systems and theories. If you do, you will begin to have doubts and to be uncertain and wavering in your thought, you will then begin to make failures. Kind of like what I was just saying, when you try to put too many vegetables in the stew, it ends up just taking, tasting like cauliflower and it's not good. After you have made good and become rich, you may study other systems as much as you please, but until you're quite sure that you have gained what you want to do, do not read anything on this line but this book, unless it be the author's mention in the preface. And read only the most optimistic comments in the world's news, only those in harmony with your picture. Also, postpone your investigations into the occult. Ooh. Do not dabble in theosophy, spiritualism, or kindred studies. It is very likely the dead are still alive and are near. But if they are, let them alone and mind your own business. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, whatever the spirits of the dead may be, they have their own work to do and their own problems to solve. We have no right to interfere with them. We cannot help them help them, and it is very doubtful whether they can help us or whether we can have any right to trespass upon their time if they can. Let the dead and the hereafter alone and solve your own problems. Get rich. If you begin to mix with the occult, you will start mental cross currents, which will surely bring your hopes to shipwreck. Now this and the preceding chapters have brought us forth the following statements of basic facts. I'm going to read the basic facts, but as far as the witchcraft, I totally agree. I, I absolutely agree, which is why if you come to me for money, I will tell you, look, just do this or just do this and this. People come with this very messy idea. Um, so I agree with that, actually, when it comes when it, when it comes to anything, really get your thinking down to pretty linear. We make decisions emotionally. We really should make them rationally, you know, so uh there is a thinking okay so here are the basic facts and i don't know if, if you've been with me all 10 chapters back in the beginning there were these there were these rules that he put out there is a thinking stuff from which all things are made and which in its original state permeates penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe has been proven by physics by the way recently a thought in the substance produces the thing that is imagined by the thought also proved Man can form things in his thought and by impressing his thought upon the formless substance can cause the thing he thinks about to be created. True. In order to do this, man must pass from the competitive to the creative mind. He must form a clear mental picture of the things he wants, hold the picture in his thoughts with a fixed purpose to get what he wants and the unwavering faith that he does get what he wants, closing his mind against all that may tend to shake his purpose dim his vision or quench his faith and in addition to all this we shall now see we must live and act in a certain way oh my god and the next chapter is acting in a certain way do we want to do that tonight no it's a little too long okay i've been talking all day uh, i'm all raspy i should go get a drink oh wait i have a drink oh my god nukes i don't know if i, oh, I don't want to spill it the Nukes cups are little lemonade cups, and I've been putting lemon water. I feel so summery. It's summertime. Um, that's our manifesting for today. Thank you for hanging with me, considering a third of it was me rambling. Thank you for looking at my nails. I'll have more videos where you can see my sparkle nails. I love these. 
We can't do these every day, but, well, I mean, oh, well, I'm going to have them every day for the week <laughs> until I take them off. But, oh, I love it so much. Let's see what else is going on. So I haven't heard anything from Peanuts uh, Adoptive Mom, so that we're going to walk. We had uh, bad weather this weekend, so we're going to walk the Chihuahuas this weekend and see if they get along. So maybe we'll have a peanut video. Who knows? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, big, big, big stuff going on this weekend. Um, moving things around here. Yeah, just big stuff happening. So, um, also I wanted to talk to you guys. I'm not going to do it this video because we're already at 26 minutes. Um, uh, manifesting technique that I wanted to talk to you guys about mirror work. Um, Louise Hay. Because I know Louise Berlay. Louise Berlay was a student of Neville Goddard. But Louise Hay, um, mirror work, we're going to talk about that. I've actually been doing some mirror work, her style. You can just Google it if you need to. Just put in um, Louise Hay of Hay House Publishing. Um, you know, she didn't even get, she didn't even figure any of this stuff out until she was 50. She didn't even really get going in life until she was like 55. Um she even said, it's so funny, she was on an interview with Oprah, and she was like, Oprah was like, what did you do before that? And she was like, nothing. <laughs> she was like, I really just did nothing. I just didn't do anything. So, um, so she's a good person to watch. Um, yeah, Louise Hay, uh, mirror work. So basically, you talk to yourself in the mirror, which some of us do anyway, but, um, yeah, it's, it's actually, it's a little difficult because you have to tell your, you have to look in the mirror and tell the mirror how much you love yourself. But yeah, things, things do happen. Things move around. Things get good. We'll talk about that next time. So many videos this week. So many things I want to do for you guys. Let me know down in the, um, the comments below if there's anything specific you want me to hit on. Uh, we are going to do free reading Friday anyway, so don't bring that up because that's going to happen. Uh, but anything else. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. Beautiful start to your week and everything's going to be great. Okay, have a good night, guys.